so I wanted to hold off a little bit on the video to, you know, confirm the foreman injury. And it's a torn Achilles, so yeah, it kind of sucks. He had a hell of a game. Anyways, Texans win 31-21. to And I'm not surprised they won. I'm really not. I'm surprised how they won. I, as you guys know, I predicted a Texans win, but I predicted a hard-fought defensive battle. This wasn't really well. It, it was a good effort by the defense. Really, realistically, only allowing seven points because Tom Savage straight up gave them pretty much fourteen because the fumble and the pick. You know, the pick wasn't his fault. I was still pissed off at him, but yeah. But 31-21, the Texans put up 30-plus points with Tom Savage, dude. That's pretty surprising. Now, Tom Savage in general, besides uh, the fumble, which he clearly still has problems holding on to the ball. It's frustrating. It's annoying. So, he's got to work on that, man. He really does. I joke around all the time, you know, Bill O'Brien need to, need to buy Tom Savage a glove. But, you know, maybe getting him a glove isn't such a bad idea. Like, pretty sure a glove could help him hold on to the ball. Anyways, Tom Savage, I thought, played a pretty good game. Pretty solid. He spread the ball around a good amount. Not just, you know, he didn't just, like, Stared down Hopkins the whole time. He gave Bruce Ellington his shares and running backs. Of course, Hopkins. And even Braxton Miller had a couple receptions. So, yeah, I'd say Savage played a pretty good game. And as much as he hates Savage, man, you got to give him credit where it's due. He played a good game. He did a good job extending plays. Like, in a few occasions, it was pretty funny. That, what, three yard scramble? I'm telling you, man. Telling you, man. When you play Tom Savage, you got to put a QB smile on him. These teams just don't learn. Anyways, Savage played a pretty good game. Good for him. Hopefully, he can keep building on that because, as you guys know, Savage is going to be a free agent this season. So, you know, maybe Savage plays well down the line to where some team gives, gives him a mega contract. And we get a third-round pick out of that. So, who knows? Or maybe Savage is... Stays in Houston and he turns into an adequate backup because I don't think Savage is starting material. Anyways, offensive line, protection wise, I think they played pretty well. Really well, actually. I think they only allowed like one sack, man. Running wise, I thought they could have opened up more holes, but when he rushed for like 120 yards. You can't really complain, but I say the offensive line has themselves probably their best game of the season. The receivers, I thought they played solid. Literally, I, I have no knocks on the receivers. Not much. I don't think much else can be said, man. It's just an all-around good performance by the offense. Of course, you know, besides the, of course, the savage fumble and the. What's it called? Interception, which wasn't Savage's fault. But, yeah, solid performance all around by the offense. Defense, I feel like the defense and lineman really did a good job. They got plenty of pressure on Blaine Gabbert. They were able to completely shut down Adrian Peterson, how I predicted, because he's an old, washed-up bum. That's all Adrian Peterson is now. And Clowney, man. This guy wants to play. He wants to keep playing two sacks today. Just an amazing performance by Jadavion Clowney. Absolutely love the guy, man. Linebackers, I thought they played pretty damn well as well. McKinney was a huge reason why Adrian Peterson was held in check. And Cunningham also played pretty well. 
there was this one particular play where Cunningham closed down on Blaine Gabbert pretty damn quick. If he wouldn't have, Blaine Gabbert probably would have ran for first down. And it's funny, still to this day, I get confused when I see um, Cunningham because he has a f number in the 40s. And you know, when I see a number in the 40s, I automatically think of DB. And God, that, I just tell you how fast he is, man. Anyways, uh, the secondary, man. Jonathan Joseph struggled pretty much the whole game. Um, I don't know, maybe his age has finally caught up on him. He had a pretty solid first half of the season, but these last three games, just, he hasn't played well. Kareem Jackson, uh, when Larry Fitzgerald was in the slot, Larry was tearing him up. And Kevin Johnson, when, you know... They were targeting him. He was doing a good job at some points, but there was that um terribly ugly, and I mean terribly, terribly ugly, the um, pass to the tight end where uh, I don't know what the hell he was doing. He just tried to go up there, but he just left the tight end open. Tight end caught it, turned around, touchdown. That was ugly. And then of course the. Uh, Touchdown he allowed to Larry Fitzgerald. I wouldn't put that one on Johnson, man. That was just a great play by Fitzgerald. I can't put that one on Johnson. I I thought he was in pretty good position. It's just Larry Fitzgerald was just being Larry Fitzgerald, man. The safeties, Eddie Pleasant and uh, Andre Howe got picks to close off the game. I thought they played pretty well as well. The safeties in general they didn't really screw us today. And Tristan Decoud and what's his name, Marcus Williams. Man, th th those guys really closed out the game after Kevin Johnson got hurt. Decoud, I don't think he went in that much, but he had a beautiful pass breakup on what would have been a third down conversion, I want to say. And. Marcus Williams had a couple as well, so those guys really helped close out the game. And I just want to say, man, what was Bruce Arians thinking on going for it on fourth and one at the at the thirty with like what six minutes left on the clock? You want to talk about bad game management? That's bad game management. What Bill O'Brien does. It's nothing compared to what he just did. Um, but yeah, I thought the Texans played a pretty solid game all around. Surprised that they won that way, putting up 30 points with Tom Savage. Of course, most of that was due to Deontay Foreman, man. The, the, the guy really finally had his breakout game. How <laughs> I've been wanting him to have for the past, I don't know, a few weeks. And he finally had it. But he gets hurt, man. It's like, God. that That's some bad luck, man. That, that, that's just some straight-up bad luck for Houston. They finally have something going with the rookie. And then, boom, he gets hurt. Anyways, the Texans are sitting at 4-6, and six, guys. I know we chalked the season up as a loss as soon as Watson got hurt. But if the Texans can continue to play how they played against the Cardinals and Tom Savage can probably hopefully limit his turnovers less the Texans could sneak into the playoffs guys not even kidding they can sneak into the playoffs they're sitting at four and six the only team that has like a hold of a wild card spot right now is the Titans the other wild card spot is wide open like to the point where even the Texans could sneak in there. I'm not even kidding. The Texans could still sneak into the playoffs. And if Tom Savage keeps playing how he played today, hey man, we can make it. And not even kidding. Look at the remaining, or not really remaining games. Look at the next few games. 
Ravens, Titans, Niners. We can really win those games. So who knows? Maybe we can make the playoffs. Anyways, with that being said, guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.